be our bus. So this is our entryway. We have two shoe shelves. They fit pretty much everybody's shoes comfortably. We change them out seasonally so that we don't have big winter boots in there in the summer and we don't have sandals in there in the winter. Right now we're in between seasons so we have kind of some of our summer stuff still out and bringing out our fall stuff. So it's a little bit more full than it usually is. On the wall, on the other side of the driver's seat here, we hang all our sweaters, our hats. Uh, in the winter, if it gets cold enough, we hang jackets there. It gets pretty packed if we have coats on it, but it works well for sweaters. Here we keep two guitars, a banjo. Uh, we have two ukuleles on board. And there's usually also a violin here. This is our living room. We have two really good sized couches because there's 10 of us and we can all fit comfortably on here. And even if we cram a little bit, we can fit a couple guests in here at the same time. And we eat here uh, on these couches. I sewed these covers. They're kind of like fitted bed sheets. So they all come off and are machine washable uh, quite easily. No zippers or anything like that involved. So we wash them pretty regularly. Uh, the couches also pull out all of these panels they pull out and they um, they don't quite meet in the middle But they make two really good sized beds so we can have guests over to sleep and They also lift up and we have storage under all of them This one is almost completely full of books at this point because we homeschool and so we have a lot of books on this side I actually keep a, a Nine tray Excalibur dehydrator that I use quite frequently it fits under there and a lot of sewing fabric because I do a lot of sewing the other side of our shoe shelf we have a little bookshelf that we keep books that we are currently working on and library books and uh, some wild edibles books this is our kitchen our kitchen is a really good size for an RV I have no complaints about it we have a five burner gas stove that we cook on we opted out of an oven we decided not to do a full-size oven we just use a convection countertop toaster oven and it does pretty much anything that we need it to we have to do things in a lot more batches maybe than we would with a full-size oven we can't cook 48 cookies in there at one time but it does what we need it to just takes a little longer so then we have all our food storage in here um, pots and pans are in the bottom we went with pretty much all drawers so everything is drawers which is pull out it uses up a little bit more space uh, to do full drawers but in terms of keeping everything organized it just works a lot better so sometimes organization is better because in the end you fit more or you can find more of your stuff uh, this bottom drawer actually holds my sewing machine and my serger so that is my sewing drawer and the rest is designated for kitchen other than our one very large drawer that has a piano it has a plug-in inside that we wired in there and so it just turns on right here and we just the kids can practice and play it right here and don't have to pull anything out and that's how we like this full-size double sink and a full-size refrigerator which when you have eight children is absolutely necessary we in our first trip had a standard rv fridge and we only had five kids at that time and even then it was miserable so a full-size fridge was necessary we got the smallest size full-size fridge but it is larger than an apartment size fridge and it's doing the trick this is our berkey water filter this is a gravity fed water filter system that we pretty much take everywhere with us. When you do a lot of RV parks, they tend to, if they're running off of their own wells, their requirements are uh, really high chlorination. That's just what a lot of places require of their RV parks. And so the water can taste really bad. So we used to, on our first trip, have to buy a ton of bottled water and trying to store bottled water is crazy. So we just spent a couple hundred dollars and we got this and we can filter water from anywhere. We have actually filtered water out of a river before when we got stuck at the side of the highway and there was a creek right there. We filtered our drinking water out of that. So it's great. You, you gotta have a Berkey. I'll also keep my Vitamix, one of my essentials. I love it. We use it for everything. We make smoothies almost every day. I make nut butters in it, a lot of different things. So that thing's awesome. Next best feature in here is 
power washer dryer combo. This machine is huge. It's a great size for a family. I only need to do laundry every two to three days when it's cooler weather and we're all wearing jeans. In the summer, I can go four or five days. It washes and it dries. People tend to either love it or hate it. And I'm one that loves it. And I hate laundromats. They destroy our clothes. We did that for so many years when we were on the road and it's not my idea of a good time. Some people prefer it. They think that it's faster. I personally find loading up all my laundry and all my kids and going to a laundromat for a day not my idea of vacationing. So I will take this anytime and it'll just wash while we sleep. This is our kids' clothing cupboard. Every kid gets their own cubby and it goes back pretty deep. It's a good size, but it's not a lot for clothes in terms of what most kids usually have, what most people usually have for clothes. And they only get as much as fits in there. So if it doesn't fit anymore, then they have to get rid of some stuff. If we are in much colder climates like Canada, where we're from, uh, then we would keep some of the extremely cold winter clothing under the bus through the summer so that it's not taking up space in there and then just pull it out and put away the summer stuff. But when we're in a milder climate like we are now in the South, then uh, everything should fit in there. There's no reason we don't need extra, extra layers of sweaters and underclothing and all that. So it all fits in there right now. We don't have anything stored under the bus at this point. And so that's how we keep the clothes. And then on this side of the cupboard, this is our food pantry. We do keep a lot of our dry goods in some of the drawers, but the rest of it fits here. And it's a pretty good size. Um, maybe not what people with eight kids would normally stock up on, but we just shop more frequently and that's what we keep. The top cupboard has our homeschool and craft supplies in it. And we do a lot of our learning online, but whatever book work that we do use, it is in there along with craft supplies, uh, extra paper, some reading books. We also keep um, a mini printer. That works great. It stores up there really nice and I can still use it to photocopy things, print things. And we do Turkish towels for our towels because we can store everybody's towel folded up nicely up there, which is something you could not do with a standard towel. It would not fit. We installed in our best three Max Air fans. They work fantastic. They keep the air moving really well. And if it's quite warm, but not really hot enough to have an AC running, they do an awesome job of keeping things cool. You can use them as a ceiling fan and with the lid closed. So even when it's colder out, you can still keep air circulating. This is our bathroom. It's a pretty good size for an RV or for a bus. We had originally a sink in the middle of the floor, but it just took up a lot of room and made it feel really tight. So we ripped it out and actually just put the tap right over the tub so it drains into the tub. We used tongue and groove cedar all around the walls of the shower and made a cedar lip on the edge of the tub so that the water goes into the tub instead of outside of it. And for the shower curtain, we just right now tack up a shower curtain around the other two walls that are not the cedar panels. This is our composting potty and we catch all of the solid waste and the toilet paper and all that in a bucket in the back. And then the front has a urine diverter on it. After you use the bathroom, you just put sawdust on top of it. We keep the sawdust right beside the potty and that keeps all the smells down. And we also have some more organizational stuff that we need to work on in the bathroom. It's been probably the hardest part of the bus to design and to make use of that space. We're working through that. This is our bedroom area. We have three sets of double bunks and they're a good size. They're slightly smaller than a twin size bed, but they are a lot bigger than we had in our Airstream when we did triple bunks in there. So the intention was that every kid had enough space to sit up on their bed so they could play. Toby is getting a little tall for that. So he cannot sit up on his bed anymore, but everybody else can still comfortably sit up and play or hang out, whatever, on their beds. We also made so that every bed has its own storage shelf so they can keep their toys, their books, whatever are their belongings on their own shelf. So everybody has their own. Also, each bed has its own outlet so that they can charge iPods or plug in lights. We have a, an outlet here. If it gets cold enough, then we can put two heaters back here. To close off the bedroom space, this curtain, it just hangs up on either side. It's just a regular curtain from Target and it does a great job of insulating. I didn't realize it would do that well, but when we close it off and we put heaters in the back or put an AC in the back, you can feel a very dramatic difference when you walk through the curtain from the back to the front. 
which is really great when you don't want to heat or cool the whole thing in the middle of the night and then we're not wasting electricity to heat a really long bus that we're only in the back half of it. These are the next set of bunks and again just the same thing everybody has their own shelves their own toys and books on it and their own outlet. And then this is our last room. This is the master bedroom, which is really just a bed. We have a queen size bed. It's a full size, not an RV size. So my husband who is six feet tall is very comfortable on there. Since we bought and originally started the bus, we had another baby, which meant that we need to move one out of our bed to make space for baby. Our babies usually sleep with us for about two years and I'm okay with that, but we needed to move this one out so the baby could sleep with us. So we actually just built another bunk on top of our foot area. So he sleeps up there. It is the same width as the other bunks, but it's not as long. So it will not last him for a lot of years. Um, he won't make it there in his teen years, but it'll do for a while. 